Jerome Bichard came to Moose Jaw as a young man. He left as a fan favorite, and tonight he returns home as one of the newest members of the Warriors and Legends Hall of Fame. Bichard played four games with the Tribe in the 1985-86 season. The following year, he would display his work ethic, his heart, and his determination, which won over the fans, the coaches, and his teammates. Well, he was a, a skinny kid from Sedley, Saskatchewan, and, and uh, um, you know, he was always full of piss and vinegar, if you don't mind me using that phrase. But, uh, um, you know, that, that era of, of Moose Jaw Warrior players uh, was very, very special, and Jerome was, was uh, at the top. He, he was a character. Uh, uh, he was a young man that, that uh, uh, had very limited skill but he worked his tail off every time he was on the ice and he did what was ever necessary uh, to not only help the team succeed but help his teammates. And He worked hard, harder than any hockey player on the ice every single shift. Maybe not the most talented skater, not the most talented shooter, uh, but always in good position and always gave 100%. And uh, when he was out of breath, he went back to the bench. Jerome had all his teeth at that time, so he actually looked quite normal, but. Uh... Um, you could tell he was a leader. I mean, a lot of the guys hovered around him and, and uh, you know, he just, he kind of brings people towards him. Bichard would show off his skill, but ask anyone here in Moose Jaw or in the pros, and they'll tell you that Jerome's bread and butter was his work ethic and passion for the game. I absolutely love the game, and, uh, and you knew that Jerome Bichard knew that it was a privilege for him to play in the Western Hockey League. He never took that for granted and uh, always worked hard, extra hard, uh, to, to stay with the team. You know, he, he competed uh, uh, extremely hard and there was never any quit in this, this young guy. Uh, uh, I remember him sticking his face in, in front of pucks, blocking shots any way that, that he could. And, uh, you know, he played on a line in those days with Blair Atchinham and Rob Harvey and they always played against the other team's best lines. And, and uh, Jerome found a way to get it done. He found a way to get it done. And, uh, um, you know, his work ethic uh, was, was something that, uh, you know, I still use today or as a measuring stick in, 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 you know, my coaching. He played hard. I remember one night uh, we were in Saskatoon and I believe Atch took a slap shot and Beach took it in the mouth. Lost three, four teeth, which you'll see in the next couple of interviews, obviously. But uh, he finished the game, you know, rode the bus home with all of us. And um, I think for the next week before he got him completely fixed, the bus stunk because his teeth were <laughs> smelled so bad. So, uh. Well, you know what, I think that he was well respected um, uh, simply because of who he was and, and what he brought to the game and, and uh, you know, people gathered around him, players gathered around him and he was a true leader, there's no question because uh, uh, whatever, it, whatever was necessary, uh, he, he would do it. There was no questions asked. And, Bichard played four full seasons in Moose Jump, suiting up in 284 games, scoring 100 goals, finishing with 238 points and 880 penalty minutes. With all that hockey under his belt, it's obvious that there are more than enough memories of Jerome in a Warriors uniform. I think he squared off with Darren McPherson one night sort of thing, and and he was a big fella, and he grabbed Jerome and kind of ragged all of them all over the place and whatnot. Of course, Jerome wouldn't give up, but uh, they get into the penalty box, and, and the story goes, he looks over at Beach and goes, hey, Beach, next time we go, do you want to take your skate guards off? And it's one of the funniest all-time Beach stories because that's kind of how he fought and skated, for that matter. <laughs> I believe it was a come-from-behind victory in Medicine Hat, and it was game three. I think we were down by a couple of goals, and we came back in the third period, and Beach scored the winner. I think Blair Atchinham set him up coming down the right side and fed Beach moving to the net. And he took uh, what he'll tell you was a wicked wrist shot, but it was kind of like an end over ender that went through some traffic <laughs> and into the net. It was, no, it was a really good shot.
Jerome never wore socks uh, in the dead of the winter. Jerome would have uh, dinner at our house probably once a week and you can guarantee that his partial plate of teeth was uh, somewhere on your plate or in your drink by the end of the night. Jerome was driven by his love for the game and his work ethic was passed down to him from his parents. During his time in Moose Jaw, he spent countless hours in the community. He fell in love with the city and the city fell in love with him. To this day, Bichard ranks high on the all-time fan favorites list. But we didn't have the home games on the radio, and that was year three, the third year the Warriors were here. And, uh, and so we'd be up in the, in the radio booth doing nothing and uh, watching the game. And uh, Mike Keane was, was out of the lineup one game uh, for, for an injury or a suspension. And Bryn and I were, were upstairs watching the game, and, and Mike came and joined us. And Bichard was having a, a particularly... Uh, dirty game. I mean, he was just getting at it. He was getting the crowd going. He was banging and crashing and he was scoring goals and just doing everything that the coaches asked of him. And I remember Mike Keane grabbed me and shook me and he said, that Jerome Bichard, that's my favorite hockey player. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Keener scared me because he grabbed me. I thought he was going to hit me. But, but uh, I'll never forget that. And, and, uh, and Jerome Bichard was Mike Keane's favorite hockey player. Probably still is. Going into every rink we played in, he was, uh, you know, the crowd would chant his name or they'd be throwing things at him or whatnot. He just, he loves that part of the game and he carried that on after with his pro career. Uh, people love him. Uh, at one time, in, I think it was in Birmingham, uh, his, uh, uh, his nickname was Stay Out of My Yard, Beast Yard. And, uh, and then he became known as Boom Boom. And uh, they love him everywhere he goes. He's got a magnetic personality. He's nice to people all the time. And, and, and that was the same story when he was 17, 18, and 19 years old. He was nice to people. And he's always been nice to people and always played hard. And the fans have always loved him everywhere he's gone. Well. You know what, I, I've always said this about, about the city of Moose Jaw and, and especially the fans of the Warriors, they're second to none. Um, they, they welcome these young guys into that community and, and uh, it's a special, special place to play. And, and, you know, Jerome coming from a small town, a farming community, and, and I mean, coming to Moose Jaw, he was coming to a big city. And, and, uh, and the people of Moose Jaw, they, you know, when a player uh, goes out and, and uh, cares as much as Jerome did about that, about that, that sweater, uh, those people, I mean, they just, uh, they warmed right up to him. And, and uh, you know, he was always a fan favorite. Uh, um, and, you know, the one thing about Jerome is uh, once a warrior, always a warrior. Bichard left Moose Jaw after the 1989-90 season. He was drafted by the Hartford Whalers in the 1989 NHL Entry Draft. He would go on to a lengthy career in the pros with stops in the IHL, AHL, ECHL, and CHL. In 1996, he made his way to the Columbus Cottonmouths. In 2004-2005, he took over as head coach. And to many, it was no surprise on his transition from on the ice to the man in charge of the bench. Yeah, Jerome was was born for hockey. He, uh, um, you know, once his playing career was done, it was everybody knew he was going to get into that. And and the ownership down, you know, where he where he is now, love him. Obviously, he's he's that community. He's the reason there's hockey down there. And uh, yeah, he he's good at what he does.
you know, he, he wears his heart on the sleeve. He's an emotional guy, and, and, uh, and, and that goes right throughout the team. There's no question. I think that, that uh, his leadership skills are, are, are one that uh, uh, people want to follow. Uh, and, and I know that uh, he'll take the bull uh, by the horns, and away he goes, because that's just the type of, uh, of young man he is. He led the Cottonmouths to two SPHL championships, the latest being last season. He won the Coach of the Year in 2005-2006. It's been a long time since Jerome Bichard has electrified the fans here in Moose Jaw. Tonight, he gives us one more opportunity to cheer his name. And, uh, and Moose Jaw and the Warriors uh, meant a lot and mean a lot to the entire Bichard family. I mean, uh, Jerome got his start here. Uh, I don't know if his mom and dad ever missed uh, a Warriors game in Moose Jaw, and they went on a lot of road trips, too. Just absolutely the, the ultimate warrior is what, uh, I believe that's what Greg Quisley uh, tagged him with when uh, he was the, the GM and head coach. He called him the ultimate warrior because he did everything the coaches asked of him and a little bit more. He led by example. He was, he was a great warrior. I think that, that uh, from, from his parents, he learned uh, what it was, what it would take to succeed. I mean, they're uh, they're a family that uh, has always worked extremely hard on the farm, and I think that's where his values come from. Um, you know, we we just spent some time with Jerome out at Scott Reed's. Uh, uh, cabin and and uh, um, had a tremendous visit with him and uh, um, you know he's an emotional guy and uh, <laughs> he had us all uh, all going that day and and uh, certainly uh, you know the one thing that uh, that he did say when we left was uh, you know we love you. He's been called boom boom by many. But here in Moose Jaw, we call him one of the all-time greats. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the newest member into the Warriors and Legends Hall of Fame, Jerome Bichard.